And so I know part of your vision of the Tiger Lily Foundation is to end isolation for young women who have survived breast cancer. So where is this isolation? Uh, where does it come from and what can we do about it? Well, the thing is, getting diagnosed with breast cancer at any age is, is challenging, but when you're younger, you're just beginning your life. You're not thinking about cancer. Right. You're thinking about, you know, you're having, getting married and having your first house. You know, you're having fun, you know, mm -hmm. getting your, your first job and having babies and things like that and caring for children. And so it's just shocking to find out you have breast cancer at a young age because um, your life's just beginning. You know, you think about something like that as something that happens to, you know, somebody further out. You know, right. Maybe in their... 40s or 50s or even you know 30s. Mm -hmm. The women that we're helping are in their 20s. Mm -hmm. So it's shocking for one, and so you know, it, oftentimes you feel the sense of your peers don't understand what you're going through. Even the physicians, sometimes the patients that they're getting in are usually older, so there's that lack of physician knowledge, maybe, or how to take care for you because your job is to save your life. Mm -hmm. They do a great job of that, but there's oftentimes not enough attention given towards how do I care for this woman um, emotionally psychologically, um, spiritually, and so that's where we come in. Um, and then also, you know, with work, you're at work and you don't want people to know, maybe know you have breast cancer, or if they do, how do they treat you? How does it affect, you know, your the trust of your employer in your work, you know, quality of your work, and, um, you know, your whole body's changing. If the women are single, it's, you know, or, or dating, how do you tell a person you're dating um, when you meet them, when do you tell them you have breast cancer, mm -hmm. or that you're bald, or that your beautiful hair is a, is a wig, mm -hmm. or that you have one breast or none, or maybe you can't have children. So these things all create sense of isolation. Um, there's a fear of recurrence, there's fear of the treatment work. And so um, even women who are survivors of breast cancer have a feeling of isolation because sometimes, you know, there's that long span of living where you have to deal with symptoms and side effects of breast cancer and live with those things for periods of time, long periods of time. Um, for women who, are, women who are metastatic, it's even more heightened, you know, the sense of, okay, so every, all the other women that they might know are survivors, they're disease-free, but the women who are metastatic, you know, they're, they're living with this disease for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. And they're in treatment, some treatments may not work, and so all of that combined make you feel very alone, very separate. Um, and for people like, for, for me, for example, I love what I do, and I, I'm triple negative is what I had with breast cancer and I have I just live my life out loud I don't have any regrets I do what I want to do and <laughs> and people sometimes are like are you out of your mind <laughs> what are you doing you know mm -hmm. and but there's a sense of you know living for today mm -hmm. and living passionately and living with you know my sole purpose right so all those things are some things are good some are bad but it just leaves you within a place where you may not feel that other people understand you, the fears of recurrence, the body image issues, the worry about, you know, dating, lifestyle, marriage, babies. And then for those of us who are crazy advocates, you know, <laughs> there are a few of us who, you know, we, we have, we connect now and talk, but it's just that you have a different lifestyle than other people. You see the world differently. Mm -hmm.